Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide and in today's video it's an in-depth-ish review of the AI Paper Mini. Why do I say in-depth-ish? Well, because I've done a very very proper in-depth review and guide of its bigger sibling, the AI Paper. Now these two tablets share exactly the same type of operating system user functionalities and all that kind of stuff. So that portion of the review would have been exactly identical. And I have no intention of doing that because I've done a thorough job there. So this video should be basically looked up on as the addendum, right? So first, if you're interested to know what the AI Paper Mini is like, then you should watch the AI Paper review and get all basically the idea of the whole device and then watch this video so that you can see how does AI Paper Mini enclose or fit into that ecosystem, those functionalities, etc. So I'm going to be covering only the meaningful differences and important aspects that are different than the AI Paper in relation to the AI Paper Mini in this video. All right, and here is the AI Paper Mini yet again. This is the same pre-production unit that I had uh, shown you uh, in the unboxing and first impressions. So let's start with the overview of the AI Paper Mini. And this is basically the little sibling of the AI Paper at 8.2 inches. The the concept itself is all the same. So this is an Android power, non Google Play enabled uh, device. It is a monochromatic device. It is a note taking enabled device. But the whole point of an AA paper is in its name and in a dedicated button here as well. And that there is a certain type of integration of the uh, open AI services within uh, throughout the whole system. For more information, information about that, again, please do watch the in-depth review and guide of the AI Paper as I will not be repeating any of those things in this video. AI Paper Mini specifications are as follows. So it has the dimensions that you can see, thickness of 5.2 millimeters. So um, fairly thin for these smaller devices because they usually, you know, increase in thickness because of a smaller footprint. So things have to be layered up in the uh, body. But this is actually quite nice to see. It weighs 230 grams and it is actually 8.2 inches uh, screen monochromatic, not 7.8. It's a Carta 1000, not Carta 1300. And it has the 297 PPI resolution, which is kind of strange, unusual type of resolution, but you know, close to 300 PPI. It has 2450 milliamp polymer ion battery. It is powered by an octa-core 2 gigahertz SOC, 4 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage, which I believe is not expandable because there is no micro SD card slot here. It is Wi-Fi and Bluetooth uh, compatible. So the design and build quality. I can't really comment on the build quality uh, negatives because this is a pre-production unit. So I will um, kind of focus on build quality positives here. And they are that I like the overall concepts of the uh, unibody uh, bucket design of the yeah, bucket design of the device. So aluminum alloy here that is actually executed in a nice way. And that is uh, something that works well. The edges are nicely rounded. They're not uh, super sharp. Even when there's corners, they are nicely kind of rounded. And that provides for a good tactile feel and good handling of the device itself. Design-wise, I think that the margins are a little bit too thin for it to uh, lend itself to be a comfortable e-reader, mainly because there's no place to actually uh, rest your thumbs. Uh, everything is either a thin margin here that you can't really rest the thumb on, other than, you know, accidentally making a touch command, and you can't really hold it at the bottom as you normally would these devices because you have these capacitive buttons here. So it doesn't really lend itself to ergonomically to uh, a nice portable e-reader, even though that is what it's supposed to kind of be. 
The layout of the device is very similar to what we've seen on the AI paper. So we have a screen that is flush with the surface, glass top this time, so no plastic surface. This is a glass surface. We have capacitive buttons for back, uh, menu and AI dedicated buttons. And that's it on the front. Nothing on either of the side, except that on the right hand side, you have the indication of where the pen is supposed to go so that you know how to correctly place it so that you have optimal magnetic uh, holding. On the top we have the power button and this one actually does couple also as a fingerprint reader but in order to do that you have to log in and do all of that kind of stuff and that's not something I'm gonna do with, uh, with a device like this or, or, or uh, uh, account like that. Uh, on the bottom we do have the USB-C port which is there for data connectivity, power connectivity and OTG as well. Uh, this would be the indication, LED indication of the status. We have a little bit of a transmittance here because it's an all metal back. It needs to allow a little bit of transmittance here for wireless signals. Um, in this unit itself, the wireless signals were not that good, but they have mentioned that the uh, production units will have crystals Im uh, uh, implemented in the Wi-Fi, which should uh, yeah, uh, uh, improve the connectivity stability and strength of the signal. Signal. And on the back of the device, we just have the Wii Woods logo and of course the name of the device. Unfortunately, no anti slip pads or anything like that. So if you want to use it on any kind of surface, it's going to slip around. The image quality of the AI Paper Mini is okay. It is, uh, I would characterize it maybe a little bit better than on the AI Paper itself, and that's because this is using the HD Carta, not the Carta Flexible uh, panel. And while there are some significant differences and the biggest trade-off is that this has a glass on top, um, the better trade-off here is that you do have improved image quality and you can immediately see that, um, yeah, in, in how the combination of rendering of the images and rendering of the text, it just seems a little bit crisper, sharper, better controlled, and uh, yeah, it just seems better than what I can see on the AI paper. The performance itself is very very, very similar to the uh, what we see on the AI paper as far as flipping pages and the ghosting uh, performance as well is very, very similar like we had on the AI paper. But here you can see with these waveforms that it really does not struggle at all despite it being a smaller size, that it does not have any difficulties in rendering fine uh, diagonal lines, straight lines, rendering color, the black intensities, the grayscale intensities and things like that. So it feels like a more capable uh, reader panel than what we had on the AI paper. This translates to rendering of graphical contents as well. So the refresh speed is quite good, but now I'm testing out how can it handle the more problematic uh, situations like the white text and then the next page is darkness and then you see quite a bit of ghosting. So ghosting performance is not that good like we had on the A paper as well. And of course there is no, uh, there's lack of dithering. So you have color banding here that is fairly unpleasant. Unfortunately, this is all coupled with the same uh, type of uh, uh, display quality and rendering that limitations of the native reader app. So you don't really have a lot of options to kind of control. You can just make it worse, right? So with bold font, denoise and HD display, that just makes things worse. And there's nothing really that I can find under settings to improve the ghosting performance at all. I mean, I can find plenty of options to make it worse by going into fast mode, and then, yeah, things are going to get much, much uh, worse as far as ghosting and image degradation and all that kind of stuff. But I can't really find options to make it perform better. Rendering of the comic book content is uh, quite nice. Uh, the only thing is that the yeah refreshing here is going to be a little bit 
kind of limited by the app itself, how it refreshes, but maybe there's an option to actually get uh, rid of that. I haven't really explored too much. I know that Kobo does have that option, so maybe that's something that uh, is possible to actually do. But generally speaking, this is perfectly fine for reading and the ghosting performance is uh, okay. You could also go into fast mode, although that will degrade the resolution, but in this case, it's something that I actually find uh, attractive because it gets, gets this kind of grainy quality, which almost gives it a feel of it being kind of drawn. Uh, so for me, it does get this kind of gritty quality, which is fairly nice. And of course, the performance of the screen is a lot better. So then you actually get the effect of the swiping left and right. So the performance of reading uh, comic books as well, I think it's flexible and good enough. And here we are at the maximum zoom level, uh, reading a yeah, text-based book on uh, Kobo uh, in the Kobo app where it actually has proper rendering so that's why I'm showing this of uh, characters and you can see that in yeah normal kind of size uh, actually a bit smallish type of size so this is the relative size of my finger here so it's smaller font but the display is capable of actually displaying the characters in a quite clear and crisp manner. The front light is not of a good quality and already some of you probably are noticing something that you have not seen on any other device and that is this flickering. No, I can't see it here but I can feel it when I'm looking at it. Uh, overall color quality, I don't like it and there's nothing I can do about it because there's no color control in the front light at all. The uniformity is okay. Generally speaking, the uniformity is fine, but the only control that you have is the intensity. And the intensity, basically here we are halfway. So this is the halfway intensity. There we go. So this is quarter intensity. And the minimum intensity would be, of course, one. And here the, yeah, it's buggy because it doesn't really understand what's what. So this would be one and that would be intensity of number one. A Paper Mini's battery performance was uh, okay, like what you would expect normally from a device like this. So I performed standard set of tests, which means that for reading tests, I, um, I would continually flip uh, pages every 20 seconds. And um, I would do that for um, yeah, a half an hour or an hour under different conditions and average out the um, battery percentage. So with the front light turned to the maximum, A I paper mini was averaging out 16.6 .6 hours of continuous uh, reading time and with the front light down at 30 percent because it's a monochromatic device then i put it down to 30 it uh, would actually give 25 hours of continuous reading time per charge when the front light was turned off it was going all the way up to 60 hours or more of continuous reading time which definitely puts it into a category of devices that have excellent battery life when we're talking about uh, writing performance it's the same type of test i write consistently for a certain period of time and then i average out the results and uh, AU paper mini was averaging out at 6.66 hours of uh, continuous writing time per charge which is okay but below that uh, threshold that i reserve that um, a device should be able to reach eight hours of continuous writing time per charge a paper mini was not able to do that with or without the front light turned on and furthermore just like the AI Paper uh, did exhibit that, AI Paper Mini also has overheating problems, but surprisingly, despite it actually being a full-on metal body, unibody, that could be used like a heatsink, it actually doesn't do that, and the screen uh, screen side of the device starts warming up in a pretty much similar position way, way more than the AI Paper did. And actually, a Paper Mini was overheating to a degree where it would become not only noticeable um, to feel the heat on the surface of the screen, but actually started to be a little bit uncomfortable. What is quite strange about that is that 
when I would feel the back of the device, which is an aluminum alloy, it felt colder than the screen surface itself. And that's not really a good combination because you don't want something that's going to be rapidly heating up the device and cooling it down and heating it up and cooling it down because the ink screens are fragile things and you don't want some something that expands and cools down expands and cools down or forces it to heat up and cool down i don't know on long term what kind of effect that will have but i can't imagine that it it could be good and there's only a handful of devices that i've ever experienced overheat and these are both ai paper and air paper mini a uh, remarkable paper pro is one of them that also exhibits that heat up that you can actually feel it in an, on on the surface of the device and big me devices were also the ones that would actually start overheating no other devices that i've ever used or tested i've never experienced that on any of the uh, other devices there so these are exceptions not the rule this uh, for me it was worrying with the ai paper with the ai paper mini the overheating issue is even higher uh, so definitely something that i think you need to be aware of and mindful of Test the test reveals that the AI Paper Mini has a really, really good writing latency of 28.33 milliseconds. So on paper, that really is a good number. So that's properly fast and should be properly good. For some reason, I don't know exactly why, my personal perception of when I was using the device was that it felt slower than that. I have no idea why. I haven't had the time to actually explore in depth why that might be, but these are the measurements, you know, 10 times repeated test, averaging out the results, and these are the results that I have. One thing I did notice during the test is the consistency was okay, but there was this issue that the first start of the writing, there's like a little bit of a lag. Every time, the first time it would start to kind of write, there was a bit of a lag, no jumping or anything like that, but just a lag and then it kind of catches up and it works fine. Screen surface friction on the AI Paper Mini strangely measured out at a quite a high resistance at 54.33% of the uh, friction coefficient of a regular piece of paper. That is not something that I would expect, mainly because when I was using it and when I was writing it, my impression was, personal, subjective impression was, that it felt a little bit slippery. But the friction is not the result of that, because the friction, you know, I've repeated the, the test many, many times, and I got fairly consistent results. And yeah, basically it should match, uh, the friction matches the one of the uh, Tab 11 Pro uh, with a screen protector or Remarkable one. But I have to tell you that that number doesn't really match what my subjective experience was. So for example, it doesn't feel 
uh, as raspy or as good as the Remarkable 1, for example, it feels a lot more slippery, at least to me it felt like that. Surface to screen distance is the expected uh, one millimeter that we normally get from the devices that actually use a front light. And yeah, there's no difference here. So we get the standard one millimeter of surface to screen distance. It's more or less a standard and a typical thing for devices of this type. The writing capabilities of the AI Paper Mini are exactly the same. So again, if you want to reference any kind of functionalities or anything like that, please do check out the AI Paper Review and Guide as all the information is um, contained there. The writing experience on AI Paper Mini for me is not good. At best, it's like a C, like good. It is absolutely inferior when compared to the AI Paper. The number one reason is that glass surface on the top it's way too slippery while it is kind of has some structure ish to it it's nowhere near good enough to actually offer for a good writing feel uh, furthermore the combination of the soft nib and this type of screen surface really doesn't feel good so it's like slippery and sticky in moments and generally speaking it's just not not a pleasant sensation at all and as a result you end up writing in a struggled way basically you are struggling to write because you're wrestling with the slipperiness and all that kind of stuff and it's just not a great combination the hardness of the surface the slipperiness of the surface the reflection of the glass it, while it's okay for a glass panel the reflection uh, performance is good or good ish and also you have a significant um, distance between the pencil and the ink because of the added um, front light so all of that combined eh, leads to not really that great of a writing experience on the AI Paper Mini. General responsiveness of the device I believe is perfectly fine and it just feels okay when this is my fingers actually being dry and not uh, offering reactions for the screen itself. So this is not the, the, the device's fault. But uh, yeah, most of the stuff is fairly reactive and I didn't really have any issues regarding the overall performance and the interactivity of the device. Device. The keyboard is nicely reactive. You can type normally on it and all of that kind of stuff. It's not blisteringly fast. It's not the best that I've seen, but I wouldn't characterize it as bad either. So it's something like a good to very good type of overall performance as a device. See, the only thing to keep in mind is, as I already mentioned in the battery section, it's like uh, when you do any kind of more uh, processor intensive tasks, and this being an Android tablet, you can actually definitely give it uh, uh, apps that will demand more from the CPU. You will get that heating up uh, issue happening. And that's, that's something to yeah keep an eye out. And the last thing that I want to cover is the cover. And it's the exact same design that we've had with the AI Paper. It's just scaled down. So for AI Paper Mini, we still have that uh, complete ripoff of the Remarkable 2 design with the uh, middle spine here and you try to kind of fit it and in this version as I've commented this doesn't really hold the device well at all uh, but again like with the crystals in the Wi-Fi this is something that they are aware of and this being an early prototype they're saying that uh, that's something that will be improved the cover feels okay as a design and I think that like if it was a good version that it was done well i can see this concept working out well let's put it like that because i do like that it's thin that it's not obtrusive i do like the uh minimalistic design of it uh, it has an auto wake up and sleep functionality it can hold the pen in an okay way so there are plenty of things um to kind of like about it but only if it's executed in the right way and uh, this one current here again pre-production model but this thing that i have in front of me uh is not it so there is potential for it and hopefully if they manage to deliver on that potential when the final products are uh, delivered then this could be a good thing uh, but if it remains in this kind of um, quality level then not so much all right, so traditionally conclusion time right for the product for the ai paper mini and normally i would go with cons and pros 
However, um, this is a pre-production model that is even earlier than the other pre-production model that I got from the AI paper. And also the state of the OS was even, you know, earlier than it was on the AI paper regular. So that being the case, I don't want to list just colons and pros, but I will give you my impressions summary of the things that I liked and things that I disliked about the AI Paper Mini. Unfortunately, there's a lot of things that I didn't like about the AI Paper Mini. As much as I like the writing feel on the AI Paper, and I really, really did like it, it's enjoyable, it's fast, it's smooth, and it's soft, it's really good, AI Paper Mini unfortunately is a different story. It's a little bit slower, nothing dramatically slower, but it is a little bit slower, but much more importantly, the surface of the uh, screen is glass and that is harder more slippery and has more reflections and it also because it has a front light it has more distance between the surface and the uh, ink itself and those all combined basically yeah it doesn't really compare well when compared to the writing feel of the AI paper. I was very much actually concerned about the overheating properties of the AI paper mini. So yes we had heating up bordering overheating on the AI Paper. On the AI Paper Mini, it's flat out overheating, despite it actually having the entire bucket back as an aluminum alloy. I can only imagine that they have not actually incorporated a heatsink that connects the SOC to this uh, bucket design on the outside, which would be such a strange decision to do because you have this giant heatsink here implemented as part of your design and you and if you don't actually use that to that advantage then something's off and why am i saying that no i didn't open it i didn't see it but when it got hot it got really dramatically hotter here on the surface of the screen while directly on the back there was almost no heat like barely lukewarm so that would not be the case if the soc thermals were actually connected to the aluminium alloy body which is what you're supposed to do in this kind of design i really didn't like the state of the cover but that's something that they've already said hey we're working on improving that so hopefully that's something that's going to be improved or is improved but in this iteration of what i had here to test that's something that I really was not impressed with, neither with the quality nor the performance of it. As I stated, the state of the uh, OS here was super early and that reflected in both performance, the bugginess and all of that stuff. So I can't really comment on that because it doesn't feel finished. The only thing that I can say is that I sincerely hope that that's not the state that it's going to be in when it ships to the customers. Because if it does, then it's a properly bad thing because it was in a really, really bad state. But considering that the OS version on this is zero point something, I think that that is a logical conclusion to kind of keep in mind that yes, at the very least, it should resemble the state of the OS uh, that it was on AI paper. But even if it does that, then you have to think about the cons that I've talked about in the AI paper review that are related to the software related issues. So all of that stuff also, of course, uh, translates in the best case scenario, it will directly translate onto the AI paper mini as well. And that's only if they get the uh, software state to be on par with the AI paper, which in this case, it was still not there. Now, what are the things that I did like about AI Paper Mini? Well, I really like the fact that you have this kind of 7.8 inch format, but a larger screen, 8.2 inch format, and the image quality was okay. I also did like the fact that it, that it uses this unibody bucket design, and it is uh, built in a very nice way, so it feels good. I love the thinness and the uh, weight aspect of the device. So you get like an 8.2, 
1.2 inch in something that's fairly portable, fairly easy to handle, and it's a really, really kind of nice thing to deal with. The only thing is that, yeah, another thing that I didn't like and I didn't mention is the fact that we only have a cold front light and the front light quality was not really that good. So, mm. so what's my final impression of the AI Paper Mini? Well, I can only tell you what I see from this pre-production unit here. And yeah, I told you the aspects that I liked and the aspects that I didn't like. Would I be able to recommend this? Nope, I wouldn't be able to recommend any kind of uh, Kickstarter type of a project. So I would wait for this to be fully done. And then, and only if you do have like a proper uh, try or return type of warranty, and you see that this is actually getting to a place where the OS is stable, where the service is stable, when the order things are kind of good, then it might be worth uh, trying out simply because of that thinness the the uh, yeah nice aspect ratio the 8.2 inch uh, uh, screen size and the fact that it does have these functionalities if these AI functionalities are something that you find useful or needed and to be quite honest I think that it actually just fills in a gap that books intentionally left blank which I don't understand because in all honesty, if books had launched a Go 7.3, which would be a true Go device, like a Go 10.3, not just like an iteration of another design, but kind of mimicking and following the design of the Go 10.3 and make it that good. Well, then yeah, then you really wouldn't want to consider this because you would have that device, but we don't have that device. So, Strangely, this uh, has the potential to fill in a gap that's not filled in the market currently. And for that reason, I think that it's worth a consideration only if it proves to be a trustworthy company, a trustworthy source, a trustworthy product and a trustworthy service. Otherwise, it's going to be yeah, I would consider it a bit of a risk because what I see here is not there yet. All right, I hope that you found the video informative and or useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and dig the notification bell in the description below to get notified when new videos come out on my deep guide. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy and see you in the next video. Bye.